So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 61. Today is the last day of August, August the 31st, 2023. And we have a blue moon tonight. So <laughs> beautiful moon um, uh, outside. But um, <clears throat> anyways, so the, the theme for tonight is um what's your role it's so I actually want to start talking about identity who we identify ourselves as um so this is kind of continuing from last week last week we talked a little bit about the the the, the matrix um what the matrix is and that we actually lived in a simulated reality and um and yeah i know it may it may seem a little far fetch for for some people. However, um, it is. There are actually a lot of scientific um, research that has been done to it, and um, and now that we are getting to the part where our consciousness is rising, so we can actually now see and understand the. Mm. Um, I would say the the gaming aspect of our reality, or the the in quotation gaming aspect of our <clears throat> reality. So that's why I want to start introducing these things because the the role we play is um, kind of dictates a lot of things. So I want to start talking about that. And that's the, uh, the the theme for tonight. And before we go into talking about all those things, we are just going to start with a little presence meditation first, a short one, just to get everybody um, to be present and let go of the, the, the day and be here. So let's take a deep breath in. So breathe in through your nose. And then let it all go. Breathe in again through your nose. And let it all go again. Breathe in one more time. And let it all go. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing. With the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And as you breathe in, also set the intention that you want to call back all of your attention to yourself. Whatever, wherever your attention has been engaged in the earlier day, earlier uh, of today, or things that are going to um, occupy your attention later on, just let all of that go. Just call back all of your attention to yourself in this moment. So as you breathe in, just imagine you're also bringing back all of your own attention, all of your own energy. And just focus on feeling what's inside your body. It's bringing back all the different parts of yourself, attention, intention, energy, Bring that all back to yourself. In this moment, just focus on here and now. And also let yourself know, let your body know especially, that it is safe. It is in a safe space.
and that in this moment you can simply focus on yourself. Focus on being in this moment. And let go of the past. No need to think about the future. Just be in this moment now. You start to feel what that feels like in your body to be simply here and now. And when you feel your body relax and that you are more present to yourself, you're more present to this moment. When you feel that, when you feel that you are more together then I'm all the way back. And take a deep breath. Open your eyes and come all the way back into the room. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome. For those of you who just joined in. Another episode of the Energy Play Shop. And I just want to... Um, <clears throat> Start off this play shop by just letting you all know. So, how come that I'm talking about this? I I was not going to talk about this, but I have a well, it's not a re revelation because I kind of know this for a long time, but I know it, but then I forget it, totally lost that um that idea and and then recently i really remembered it and i really am am embodying it and um it was i was actually attending um and just just a two three hours online seminar from chris duncan and chris duncan is a interesting guy and he developed something called magnetic mind and I've been looking at it and really enjoying it for the I would say at least the past couple of years I, I enjoy how smoothly he he does his job of explaining what's really happening and how come some people are so good at creating their own reality whereas some people are just left right and and every which way and just just messing up all a lot of the times and um and so each time I listen to him I would remember and then all of a sudden right afterwards I would forget again but then this time I think it is really the um is it it's that I'm I've been integrating more and more of the them all the concepts in my own life that this time I it, it actually stuck with me a lot more. And so I want to talk about identity. He was talking about how we all have different, we think of ourselves. So what is identity? Um, what was that? Sorry, somebody was trying to say something. Oh, then did my connection uh, Stop. Yeah, you was disappearing. Okay, okay. I'm glad I'm back now. Right? Hopefully, I'm ba I'm back. Okay, good. So, um, I just want to get my notes. Okay. So, um, we are because I my understanding is we are eternal essence and body. We are actually a lot more than this body. And um, and I know that, and I also know that um, 
we, we as in, uh, well, okay, me, um, but it's the same for everyone else. Everyone else is kind of have, have the same, uh, it's in a similar situation. Can you guys see me? What was that? Sorry, I, I missed it. Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Okay, great. Um, okay, anyway, so we we are all eternal essence and we come to earth and we we play in essence, we play. Of course it does not feel like it. It feels very real and when it hurts, it feels very real and it's not an easy game. However, no matter how hot we our experience may have been, this is, mm -hmm. it's a play. It's a game. It's you freeze the game, Vinny, for a few seconds. For a few seconds? Okay. No, we miss what you're saying then. Continuously. Okay. You are good on my side. I can hear you perfectly. Okay. All the time? All the time? Uh, not in the beginning, but now when you are saying that the connection is uh, not good, uh, I can I could hear perfectly. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm sure. about that. Sometimes some I can. Words, some are missing. Some words are missing. Yeah. Okay, I cannot quite um, control how the the, the connection is. is going to be, but um, I shall do my best. Maybe slow down a little. And just pay more attention to uh, how the uh, action is going. Okay. Um, it would help if there, if you guys, I better. It would help if you mute yourself, so you don't. Okay. Thank Sorry. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome everybody, welcome. And um, so, well, I just, so, okay. So let me just start over again. So we are eternal essence and we come on earth to play. And at times it may not seem like, you know, what do you mean by play? It's, it hasn't, it has been anything but play because it's, it, it's not an easy game. And yes. I totally agree. It's um, Earth is a um, has been, or anyways, has been really tough playground. And um, however, things are going to get better. Um, not maybe not right away. The that's the trajectory is that it's going to get easier and easier as time goes on because we are making a shift. So. So getting back to we here on earth and and everyone come here, everyone to come here, me, you, anyone else who come on earth. Before we come here, though, we have certain themes that we want to um, explore and experience while we are here on earth. And so we even before we come, even before we are. Um, we come here through birth and like all that all that story that we create in in order to come here to play all that is um we already picked out um aspects of our personality and our personality is a creation we actually create ourselves um, the, my essence created this personality call that, you know, um, that I answered to Winnie and I come from a certain, um, lineage background and my last name is Louis. Yes. All that. But, but, um, that is actually a creation. It is something that I created whether it is consciously creating or um, unconsciously creating, it is still this person that um, you all see before you 
and my family know as as Winnie is a creation. It is something that we day by day, second by second, year by year, we create it ourselves. So that um, and we create the experiences that we've been through all that. So we create a character, a role, an identity. And that is our own creation. And, and before we come to play this role, to, to be the, um, the eternal essence behind this, this character, we, the, essen the um, um, eternal essence of ourselves picked out, okay, this role has certain abilities and certain limitations. And so, and depending on what kind of experience we want to, to have while we're here, we would um, design the limitations and the abilities according to what we want to experience. So that's a lot of that going on even before we um, are born. And once we're here though, um, once we arrive in this game as a newborn baby, we also one of the caveat is we forget that we are eternal essence. And so we are now going through a process called ascension. So what is ascension? Um, going through to a different playground, going to 5D. There are so many different ways of explaining what ascension is, but in very simple terms that I, from my understanding anyways, is, is that ascension is really a process of remembering that we are more than this body, remembering that we are eternal essence. So that is kind of the, the, the one of the really crucial um, piece of ascension is we remember that we are eternal essence. Because before then, this game on earth is so convincing. We don't, we, we don't remember who we, that we are actually eternal essence. And even though I've known that I'm eternal essence for, well, okay, I, I know maybe not the right word, but I've heard that I am eternal essence. I probably heard that maybe about 15, maybe 20 years ago. However, it took me a long time to actually believe it, actually take it on and have no doubt, doubt about it. It took me probably a good part of 10, 15 years. So it's, it's really the last maybe four or five years that I really can live that um, experience and um, embody that, knowing that I am eternal essence, that this is only this body, all, all that I see, um, all the reality that I'm interacting with, that is just a game. And as long as we are in this game, we have limitations. And ascension is remembering more of who you are and also the process of embodying your eternal essence. And as you embody more of your eternal essence, you also shed the limitations as well. Um, not in one lifetime, maybe. Um, well, I, I, can't, I can't say for anyone else. I can't even say for myself because I don't know how long it's going to take for me to fully remember everything, all the, 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 the um, my eternal essence from beyond space and time. Who knows how long it will take me to remember all of that. It may take me one lifetime. It may take me 10 more lifetimes or a hundred more lifetimes. It's everyone has their own journey and so there is no time there's really no um time limit some people like to take a hundred lifetimes 
a thousand lifetimes, some people like to take one. Like, yeah, I remember. That's it. So everyone is on their own journey. And so um, our eternal essence is playing this character. And I know a lot of us, um, it's like, so how do we get out of this? How, how do we, how do we <clears throat> start to live a life that we actually can enjoy? And I think that was um, most of what it is that I, I, I got is the, it's really about the identity all the 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 pain, all the illness, all the um, limitations is because we have lived an identity. My identity is I am this Chinese woman of a certain age, and I have um, kids, and like all of that. So as long as I am playing the game in this identity, then I have all of these um, limitations that come with it that, oh, okay, I have financial limitations, I have uh, mobility limitations, I have certain aches and pains in my body, all of that. It comes with the identity. But when you actually start to remember that all this experience is just from an identity, then you can start to rise above it. And when you, the more you can rise up above it, meaning that you understand that, oh, this is just a role you play. Because when you're in the role, when you're really in the role, <clears throat> and I tell you, oh, this is a game, you would think that I'm crazy. You, there's, there's no believing it. And you would give me, you know, so many reasons why um, this is not a game, this is real. Um, and why? Because it's designed that way. This game is designed to completely have us engaged so that we are we we think this is real and this is part of the 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 deal is we think this is real we totally believe that this is real until we can start to remember our eternal essence that we are actually eternal essence and hearing that you are eternal essence and me telling you that you are eternal essence does not do anything for you. You have to actually live it, embody it, and from your own experience, know and start to trust. So hearing about that this is a game um, is not the same as embodying. That's why embodying your eternal essence is what we are doing now, what we are trying to do now as we go on our journey of ascension. So um, why? Well, it's because who we are, the, the identity, the role is something that we, is unconscious. You don't know that, you know, all of the, the things that I identify as, you know, this Winnie, I dress a certain way, my hair is a certain way and um, I behave a certain way and I talk a certain way. All of that is all unconsciously controlled. So because of the life that I've lived, all of those experiences, all of those beliefs, all of those um, events that has happened and the results that I've gotten, all of that is stored in the unconscious mind and in this unconscious mind you have kind of created an identity and you may not understand that a lot of the times when you react to something 
um, when you choose even the food you eat or the, the clothes you wear, all of those, very unconsciously, it is from that identity. That identity is, is, is not something that you, um, you can see very obviously. Other people may be able to, to see. If other people are more conscious, they would be able to see. But it really takes consciousness. Um, consciousness meaning that you you rise up to the point where you understand that you know all this is just a a game. It's a role. You you take on a role, and because of that role, for example, you were seldom see me wear red because you know, in my role red is just not attractive to me however I know people who would not wear anything other than red and I actually remember a time of my life when I was much younger when I would not wear anything that is not red however I've grown into this persona now that does not like red um I, I would wear just about like blue, green color, um, sometimes white, uh, a lot of gray. So those are the colors that I would wear uh, or I gravitate towards. Whereas if some, if I see a piece of clothing, I may like the style, but if the color is red, then it is kind of not as attractive to me. So is that because red is bad? No, nothing like that. It is. It does not fit my persona. So who you are really is, is very unconscious. It dictates who I am, dictates what I like to eat or not as well. And so um, that's something that your unconscious mind control. And um, what, what can I say to to that so what your unconscious mind do is the things that you have done and you're able to um it, your unconscious mind does not like to change your unconscious mind remembers all the things that you have done the things that you have um experienced and survived the experience so it knows what what things that you've had for example i've had um a certain tea, like Earl Grey tea, and I like the, the taste of it. So I would try to get Earl Grey tea again because I had a good experience of it and my unconscious mind would um, kind of let me know that uh, Earl Grey tea is safe to choose. However, somebody else, if they like to, let's say, drink um, beer, they would say, oh, okay, yes, beer. They would like a beer. For me, you give me a beer, I can't drink it. So, because it does not fit my unconscious mind's program. And um, so it's it's a lot of, a lot of it, um, a lot of the decisions you make, a lot of the, even the way you stand, um, and how how you make choices in your life and who you hang out with, what you do and what you don't do. It's such an unconscious choices that we make. And that is the identity part. And also if you add to it that a lot of times our experiences in the past um decades there's a lot of fear punishment trauma also going on i i know that uh, i grew up in a environment where corporal punishment my my parents beat me and it's something that is natural that they they don't think of it as you no know, bad but whereas if we come into this society um if you beat your child in public you would get uh, you would get in trouble you would definitely get in trouble because this is it's a different society 
Whereas way back when I grew up, that society, if, if my parents beat me in the street, it's perfectly okay. Nobody would bat an eye. And um, so, however, that punishment, fear, trauma, all of that actually is part of the, the process of solidifying the, the, the personality because your unconscious mind remember, oh, if you do this, you get beaten up. So don't do it. Do whatever else, but don't do the things that you are going to get punished for. And that's um, that's one one way of reacting to a punishment, whereas um, a different personality, a different role to play, they may think, oh, you beat me? Okay, I am going to definitely do these things to see... Um, there are people that uh, are more defiant. So they're not going to be um, beaten down so easily. So all of that is part of the, the personality that you picked for yourself and also the programming that happens or the experiences during your lifetime reinforcing the character that you have chosen for yourself to experience. Um, okay. I want to stop for a little bit and um, see any feedback, comment, questions so far before I continue. Well, my parents also beat me up in my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Winnie, yes. What uh, what did you call the what we're trying to embody? What, what? Eternal essence. So it, it's really our our soul. Okay, that's what I was wondering, and yeah. I, I'm I'm I'm. I'm thinking that if if I don't believe that the matrix is real and I believe I'm creating my own reality and mm -hmm. will there come a time then or how will a time come where I might look at the sky and I'll see something different than what I've seen all my life? And how will that come? What will make that? What will make that change? Oh, you know, you know what I mean. Like, how do I lift the lid on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, I I totally know um, what you mean. <clears throat> um, mastery. So right now, our senses, our five senses, or okay. Our five senses have been trained to only focus on a certain band. Right. Okay. Focus yeah. on a certain band. So you will only see the things that everyone else can see. Okay. And because um, when you when we're young, we we train. It's a very unconscious process. So. You may, like, I, I remember when I was young, I can actually um, hear voices. I can see things. But when I bring it up with my mom, my mom was like, like her reaction, let me know that that's not normal. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a fear response. So, so when, um, so when I don't get reinforcement to tell me, from a family to tell me that okay this is normal you we can actually see those things whereas I didn't come from a background where it's normal to be able to see these things so okay. it was, I suppressed it so that's right. why I don't I, I like I, I don't see that so we our senses our five senses get trained it gets shut down so that we okay. can fit into the norm 
And now, now that we are getting, now we are taking responsibility of our five senses. So what do we do? We actually start to train ourselves to see. Okay. When you train yourself to see, then you will be able, like your, your body will know, oh, now we can see these things now. Then your body will start to expand the, um, the spectrum of what you can see and expand the spectrum of what you can hear, feel, smell, like all those things. Okay. So are we going to like ask for that or invite that to happen that I'm open to seeing more than what's there or beyond what my trained eyes can do? Do I ask for that or how do I bring that about? If you want to do that, yes, that's, that's what you do. So, okay. so for example, um, Sifu James, what he trained us is like he he trained us to see our own um, energetic body. So what we do is we go to we face um, a white wall or some, some or something that is white, a light background. Okay. And, and, and you kind of uh, I find that when the light is a little dim but not all the way black like not a dark room, but kind of there's still light, but it's a dim light, not a bright light. Then right. you, when you face the wall and you look at your own, um, so, so you would see your own shadow. Then you start to train your eyes to see the, the energy field beyond your physical body. And, okay. and so you tell yourself, I want to see, I want to see. And you start to train your eyes to see. And I was actually being able to see that. Okay. Okay. So we're going to initiate this by asking for, for an expansion. Okay. Yeah. You oh. yeah. talk to your body. Let your body know that you are ready. Okay. And also um, spend time. Not, not, not doesn't have to be a long time. But um, like maybe 15, 20 minutes each day to really um, do something that to, to train your eyes, to okay. see things that is not solid. So that's one way of doing it. Okay. You, you don't really have to um, face the, the wall or anything. You can actually just, you know, um, like put your hand up and try to stop, try to see there's a, an, a, um, a layer of energy just, just above the, your skin. Right. Is, it's slight tint. So it's slightly, there is a very slight tint. So it's not nothing. So if you really pay attention and train your eyes, you will start to see that there is a layer of energy. So you can do that as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. In your eyes. Yeah. And also <clears throat> so many things that you can train. So before you go, like I used to train myself is let's say I'm expecting a uh, parcel. Then I would train myself to, okay, when do I think the parcel is going to come? What time, which day I just you know, get, a, a date or, and a time and then when it comes I will know whether I'm on uh, whether I'm right on or I'm a little off or completely off so little things like that start to train your eyes to go beyond the physical okay so you're training your extra senses it's yeah it, it is like that if you don't give instruction to your body, so your body is really the translator of your senses. When you don't give your any um, instruction to your body, your body is not gonna change. It does not like to change <laughs> unless you tell it, okay, I want this now and you, 
keep it up with action, with time and your attention. When you keep it up, then your body will know, oh, she's serious. Okay. Uh, let me see what I can do. And it will start to expand. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Other questions? Comments? Okay, great. Well, then in that case, I shall... Um, let me see, what else do I want to talk about? So, um, in a nutshell, all the, the things you can do and all the things that you cannot do, you actually choose it yourself. Your limitations, you chose those limitations. You chose the identity. You chose the, the role that you play in the family. But that does not mean that it is fixed and, um, and it cannot be shifted at all. You know, like Even your own illness, you're the one that chose those. You, you chose them. But um, in a very unconscious way, you don't, of course, you don't um, consciously choose. I consciously choose to um, have a, a bad kidney or I consciously choose to have only one eye or I choose. I, nobody would choose that. But by the, 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 the personality the things you eat, how you take care of your body, how you um, respond to things. You unconsciously choose those things. Your body is actually the, the sum total of all your thoughts, all your thoughts. How your body is, is that. So that's why when you start to change the way you think about yourself when you start to choose a different identity for yourself and those things will start to shift as well <laughs> what no comment <laughs> Okay. I um, wanted to ask about prayer and affirmation, stuff like that, or even, you know, some people say that, you know, energy work, you know, work on your chakras or stuff like that. Those are ways that we try to change our experience, correct? Um, not really. You can. Mm. So when you when you balance your chakra, when you do energy work, you you create a field that will support changes, but you still have to remember to choose differently. Mm. Because so, your, your identity is so unconscious. Yeah, true. Yeah. Your identity is, like, that, like the role you're playing is not something that is always here. Oh, I'm playing this identity. That's why, you know, I'm so-and-so you know, say those things to me. You don't remember when somebody um, tells you something that, um, um, that, goes, that, that goes against your boundaries, you're not going to remember, oh, this is because I'm playing this role, that's why, and that person is playing that role, that's why they're saying this to me. You don't remember it. When somebody pisses you off, they piss you off. Mm -hmm. You don't remember that, oh, this is just part of the game. 
But like, it's so difficult to change your identity. Like you said, if we balance the chakras, if we uh, balance our energy centers, it support us, but uh, it supports the changes. But at the same time, it's going like um, it's it's uh, very difficult. It's not difficult. It's um. It's actually. It takes commitment. Okay, it's difficult. The right word for it. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that it is easy. I'm. I'm not. It is simple. But it really takes that you have to shift out of being unconscious. When you always react from unconscious place, oh, this person say this to me, how dare her, how dare them. If you always do that, then um, you, you're reacting out of, from, from an unconscious place. Whereas when you become conscious, become conscious meaning that you always remind yourself you, you have to keep asking yourself this question. What role are you playing? Who are you being in this moment? Are you being Winnie the little woman or are you being Winnie the eternal essence embodied? You have to keep reminding yourself that is part of consciousness. Consciousness as you remember. Unconscious. All the identity is unconscious. It's all the experience. We think that we are our experiences. We are not. We are so much more. We have experienced things, yes. But in this moment, when you choose to be different and you remember to choose to be different, to react differently, to entertain different thoughts. When you choose, when you remain conscious, when you remember what it is that you actually want to experience, who it is that you actually want to be, when you do that, then you will start to shift. You will start to shift how you see yourself. You will start to shift how you see others. You also shift um, how your body heals. Like there are spontaneous remission of, you know, even the most like end stage of any kind of um, disease. When you truly remember who you are, shift your consciousness, your body can heal itself so easily. It's simply because we unconsciously lift an identity and we don't um, remember who we are enough, often enough. And this period of, atten uh, of ascension is really for us to remember who we are. When we remember who we are and we choose to remember who we really are, not this um, not this identity that we're playing in this moment, that we we actually are capable of much more when we constantly remind ourselves, then we can start to embody our eternal essence. And that's how we can shift out of it. Embodying simply means that we remember. And as we remember who we are, we make choices according to who we truly are, rather than the hurt. Um, little inner child, we actually grow our inner child up to being the eternal essence. It's simple. And um, I'm not trying to say that it is easy, but it is simple. 
actually today I did it. I was in a public place and I left with such a sense of anxiety. And uh, all of a sudden I remember uh, your meditation and I started to bring pure, pure love. And I started to breathe and it disappears. It's a start. Yep, it's a start. Yeah. And um, the more you stay conscious, the longer you stay conscious and choose to choose to act rather than to react unconsciously. The more you do that, the more you start to shift your experiences as well. So when you make deal with your habits, how you... <laughs> your habits. <laughs> Uh, if you get used to do that all the time. Step by step. I remember I was um, like, I have to pick up a book uh, up at Yorkdale today. And um, like I was thinking about, oh, okay, I would love to have um, a tiramisu cheesecake because Cheesecake Factory, uh, there's a restaurant there that has cheesecake that I really like. And I thought, oh, I want that, I want that. And then um, as I got to Yorkdale and picked up my book, I was just sitting there and remember, okay, I know who wants it. Yes, it's, the, it's, it's, it's my character. Wants something sweet. So I just switch over and say, okay, yes, I know the character wants it, but let me just go into my eternal essence mode and really check in with my body. Do I really want to have it? And when I switch into a different mode, I was thinking about the um, tiramisu cheesecake and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it still tastes good, but I don't have that. Oh, I would like to have that. I don't have that that you know itch or longing anymore so when you take the time to switch into uh, the other identity your 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 eternal essence identity and check in with yourself okay i am not thinking as the um <clears throat> the personality now I'm thinking as eternal essence do you still want that is that an experience that is still desirable and if it's yes go for it some days it will be definitely a yes some days and today it happens to be a no so I didn't get that <laughs> so that is how you do with with everything with habit is when you feel that you are, you know, you're going for something out of habit and you become conscious enough, then you ask yourself, not as your personality, but as the eternal essence and body. And when you are a different um, identity, do you still want that experience or not? Do you still want to do the same things? or not. That's why um, a lot of the spiritual teaching is about being in the moment. When you're in the moment, you are conscious. You're really relating to yourself in this moment. And in this moment, you are not acting, you're not reacting, you actually have a choice. But when you are unconscious, as you know, sometimes, when I when I um, watch YouTube, I go unconscious very easily. Go unconscious, and I have to choose not to go unconscious. I have to choose. Okay, yes, I know. I like to watch, you know, this 
certain um, video. Yeah, but that's the unconscious me. Do I really want to spend five minutes or 10 minutes of my precious life on this earth to do that? And you choose when you are conscious. You don't do things. You, uh, you try to not um, be conscious. The more and longer you can stay conscious, then you can choose consciously. You're not letting the unconscious personality take over. The same with the things that you don't want to do? Thing. Yes, ask you uh, choose. <clears throat> you choose. There are things that you know you don't want to do, no matter which personality you are. And there are things <clears throat> when your eternal answers um, say, "Okay, you know what? Yes, right now, in the present moment, it may not be um, pleasant to experience. However, when you do this, let's say things like um, you know taking care of yourself." cleaning the house or washing dishes you know who likes to do those things not everybody but those are the things that you do in order to have a clean environment um, pleasant environment for yourself to live in so you you choose it's things that are that really um, you choose to do that is good for you in the um, eternal essence identity as well. Thank you. A couple of questions here. Um, how can you do that when your body gets into pain? It's like most of the time, I feel like I have no control over it. It wants to come. And um, how can I deal with it? Yep, I know. It's not easy when your body is not well. So I, I remember last time I mentioned to you is you start to imagine how you want your body to feel. Your eternal essence and body, your imagination is actually powerful. Even when your body is in pain, um, I remember hearing this, this story from um, Emilia Benz. Um, I don't know if anybody know who she is, but she is a, um, she's a powerful woman. What uh, was the name? Emilia Benz. I've never heard of her. Okay, okay, that's that's okay. Just um, look. So just so she's a very uh, aware woman, um, and she actually, when she was born, she was she remembered who she is. So she's one of these special people. However, in her youth, she was very um brave and say okay. Yes, I'm here to raise the vibration, and I'm going to do battle with um <clears throat> with the with, with evil that's running this the evil energy that's kind of uh, running the earth. So she actually got herself in a lot of trouble, and her body was um in such a state that she couldn't do any of the work that she wanted to do in this lifetime and that would um when was she I forgot what, what time how old she was at that time so her body is really broken down however she knows who she is she remembers who she is so even with her body being in pain she take every day she would take however long you can manage. Um, you may only be able to start with just a few minutes a day. It's to really, re like really feel in your body what it feels like to be healthy. Just a few minutes a day. 
because um, your body does not know. You have to let your body know what you want. <laughs> when you that is actually a prayer to feel a prayer is not just with words with thoughts it can be with feeling it can be with thoughts it does not actually need to have words to it the the most powerful prayer is actually a prayer that you feel all over your body Okay, wow. Yeah. And, and my second question was, yeah, thank you. That, that is really good. My second question is that we've heard that people say, I'm not my body, I'm not my mind, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm spirit. What do you think about that? Does that create division? Yeah, I don't, that does not resonate with me anymore. But I know at one point, it does resonate with me. At one point, I believe that, you know, yeah, we are spirit. So the body is not important. So I, I have, I spent um, a lot of my years um, really not respecting the body. However, we are in this, we're in this um, playground because we want to experience and we experience through the body. So the body and the spirit has to come as one. Yeah. It's about mm. embodying. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So that is that is actually um yeah. That is a big part. We are ascending with our body. Wow. Yeah, that makes uh, that resonates with me. Yeah, because it's like it's like reject. I mean. Yeah, it's a game. It's not real, but still, <laughs> you need the body to to um, experience this world. Yeah, you need the body to experience. So that's why um, when your body is healthy, um, it makes everything else easier. Right. It does, not, it does not mean that it's impossible. It's just not as easy. I totally understand. I. I I can, I can, <laughs> I've experienced that. So yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Start by just like a few minutes a day. Just. Okay. Even if you can't feel it in your body because you, your, your body may have pain, is to really imagine how you want your body to feel. And imagine how you actually would feel when you're, your body is healthy. Just imagine that. I'm not saying that your body will start to do that. However, when you start to say this, when you start to embody how you actually want to feel, um, you're, you will start to um, connect, make connection. Either you are going to meet someone who would be able to assist you in shifting you out of your you know, like all of this or your body would start to respond by being able to repair itself or you will find something else is going to start to help you because it is a game so you need a story so you're going to start to create the story for you to shift your body from whatever it is now to whatever it is that you want it to be. However, it's that by you really stepping into what, how it is that you want your reality to be. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, thank you for your questions. Okay, let me see. <laughs> um okay so
yeah, stay conscious. How do you, so our identity really, um, who we think we are, kind of creates the box within which we can create. Or it actually, if we believe that we are this, then it sets the limits of what we can create and how our creation can show up. When you start to remember who you truly are, that you are beyond this body, you actually are eternal essence. And you start to take the steps to step into a reality, even though you can't see it, you can't taste it, you can't touch it in this moment. But you hold it in your energy field. You hold it in your mind, body, and emotions. When you start to do that, you create a different reality for yourself. You start to create a different reality for yourself. And of course, it helps if you... Um, So a couple of things is letting go of the past does not mean you have to forget about it. You can remember it, but get to the point where you are not, you can let go of the emotional attachment to your past experiences. So this is where the neutrality comes in, get to neutrality. And then, um, and also remember that appearance, what you see, what you hear, what you feel in this moment is results of the past. It's a result of what you thought, how you act in the past. And when you know that, when you stay in the moment and consciously choose how you want to act rather than react in the moment, then you start to embody your eternal essence. And um, also a couple of things is give yourself permission to fail. Um, I remember the <clears throat> uh, my program, my programming, and I think a lot of people's programming is they don't they don't like to be wrong they don't like to fail like failing is it's a shame it's a shame in in failing it's a shame in getting things wrong give yourself permission to fail but also remember that every time you fail you 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 are not succeeding yet learn learn from so review what you've done and find out how come I did not get what I want. What is it that is that I'm still missing? Learn from it. When you learn from an experience, even if you fail, it's not a failure because you learn from it. So start to give yourself permission to fail. Give yourself permission to get comfortable with not knowing. Because if we always want to know, if we always want to know what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen next month, what's going to happen next year, if we need to know if we have that, then we're always trying to do things in a predictable way. But if you're trying to shift, if you're trying to embody your eternal essence, it is going to involve you having to do things maybe different from what you have done before, and you won't know what the results may be. You may fail 10 times, and then 11 times you're going to succeed. It may take you longer, it may take you less. However, when you really um, want something, 
really want to create an experience for yourself, and then um, remember that this is what you want as often as you can. And also feel as if you already have what you want. We, we are in a game reality. In, in a game reality, if you already have the sensation that you can feel, that you can see the experience that you want to experience, then it actually make it much faster and easier for that reality sh to show up. And that is actually the, 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 the cheat code is to act, not, not really act, but to train your senses to be in the mode of already having what it is that you want to experience. The more you train yourself to be in the state of already having what you want to create, then the faster and easier um, that comes. <clears throat> um, something else to, to remember as well is remember that everyone else is in the same boat. Everyone else is also playing a role. And if they say something and do something that um, does not does not align with you, then um, you know you have a choice. You don't have to kill them off. You don't have to shut them out. You just have to remember that they are just playing a role. And really ask yourself, what is it that you are holding on to that? is actually keeping that um, energy that you don't want to experience still in your reality. And when you can let go of that, then even when that person is staying, saying the same things, you would experience it differently. It will bother you less. Even if somebody is maybe shouting at you, um, when you can shift out of the, <clears throat> I cannot handle conflict. I cannot handle conflict because I am this personality and this personality does not like to handle conflict. However, eternal essence, what, and that identity is really to understand because everything that happens in your um, reality, it's there for a teaching moment, for a, a reason. When you start to understand the reason, then you won't react the same way. You can actually choose how to relate to that person or event. And last thing is, life is to be enjoyed. Really, it is to be enjoyed. It's This is, yes, it's not an easy life, but we're not here to suffer. At least that is not the intention of life. And that's all I have to say about identity about the role that you're here to play questions comments all good <laughs> excellent